Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. I'm going to be doing a bunch of narrations of some of my all-time favorite horror stories from all over the internet. I hope that you enjoy listening to them as much as I did reading them. These stories are absolutely phenomenal and all the credit in the world to the writers. This story is called A Warning to Those Who Want to Be Mermaids by a user called Inker2011. Ever since I can remember, Amber loved the water. I remember moving down to Orange Beach, Alabama in the fourth grade, and as soon as Amber and I became friends, she invited me to come and play at the beach with her. Even when I started to become bored with the barren stretch of sand and the droning sound of the ocean's waves, Amber would want to stay out longer until the sun started to set and the turquoise water would become dark. If it weren't for my mother's strict rule that I had to be home by dark, I'm sure she would have forced me to stay out longer. It was like that our entire friendship all the way to high school. In high school, we started to drift apart a little. She joined the school swim team so that she could use their pool, and I joined the track team. We started to become busy with going to our separate practices, but despite growing close to the other people on the track team, Amber continued to be my closest friend. I would visit her every Tuesday and Wednesday afternoon at the school pool and watch her swim until she was done with swim practice. When she was finished, she would give me a small wave in acknowledgement and then head over to the locker room to change. Afterward, we'd go to the beach and grab food from the many restaurants along the coast, then head to a quiet spot on the sand or an empty pier and stay there till dark. I never really cared much for swimming in waters that I couldn't really see in. I didn't like the idea of thousands of little tiny creatures swimming around with me, or something like a shark being able to brush by me without me seeing it. So I'd always just sit on the pier or on the sand and watch her. This routine continued all the way into our senior year. It was at the end of our graduation that Amber decided that she wanted to meet up at the beach around midnight. I was 18 at this point and since I'd always hung out with Amber till late, my mother had become indifferent to the idea. I met her by the pier, the one I usually sat on when watching her swim. She was standing at the edge facing the sea, her long dark hair shifting with the breeze behind her. Her clothes were in one big pile on the ground, her skin bare and glowing under the pale moonlight. Probably since the first day we'd become friends, I'd kinda liked Amber. Around the start of high school, I'd wanted to confess to her, but I wanted our friendship to stay the same. Looking at her now with the moon's rays illuminating the gentle curves of her body, I wondered why I'd bothered. I stared at her silently for a moment, letting the image of her burn into my memory. Even now, as I'm writing this, I can see her standing there immortalized in that moment forever. Too soon I called to her from the sand, my eyes turned to the retreating waves along the shore. I asked her why she wasn't wearing a swimsuit, and without hesitation she turned to me, her bareness fully displayed to me now. The wind pulled the curtain of her hair away from her face and I could see a mischievous smile starting to form. I could see a hint of amusement glimmer in her eyes as she caught me quickly looking away again. She waved to me, and with my eyes focused on the wood below, I walked to her. She explained that she'd found instructions on how to become a mermaid somewhere deep within the obscure part of the internet, and she had to do it on the night of a full moon. Aside from the fact that I thought she'd found some fake instructions, I could see her as a mermaid. I could see her with a shimmering silver tail diving below the crashing waves, finally finding her place somewhere deep under the sea, the place she seemed to love the most. How? By dancing naked under the full moon? I teased her and the playful curve of her lips fell. She crossed her arms over herself and turned away slightly. She didn't appreciate my humor and I could feel her disappointment. She didn't let that stop her though. I could tell she'd become a little unsure when she replied back. The moon is a mystical force that you shouldn't underestimate. If only I'd believed her then. I would have stopped her. She bent down and grabbed a knife from the pile of clothing beside her and held it over her hand. She looked up at me then. Her face was so sober, her eyes so sad as she said, After tonight, I'll go away forever. I don't think they'll let me come back to visit once I've transformed. After tonight, I'll go away forever. I don't think they'll let me come back to visit once I've transformed. I struggled not to laugh at how seriously she was taking all of this. 
She really thought she was going to become a mermaid. As long as you're happy, was all I could manage to say. Then she drew the knife across her hand and let her blood spill into the ocean, the black mixing with black. Despite myself, I couldn't help but hold my breath waiting. Nothing happened at first. We sat there quiet, both of us waiting as the rumble of the ocean filled the night. Just as I was beginning to feel doubtful, I heard a song. There were no words in the song, nothing but strings of notes mournfully echoing over the pounding surf. Amber began to cry. I didn't know if it was because of the song, the fact that she'd never see me again, or because mermaids actually existed. But before I could ask, a slender pale arm rose from the waves and beckoned her to it. She started to slip into the water, but before she could lower her other foot in, I grabbed her. I didn't know why, but something about that arm waving at her from the pitch of the sea didn't sit well with me. She started to slip into the water, but before she could lower her other foot in, I grabbed her. I didn't know why, but something about that arm waving at her from the pitch of the sea didn't sit well with me. I didn't want her to go. I didn't feel safe, and I told her so. She stared at me in silence, a dozen emotions flashing across her face as she glanced back and forth between the hand that was holding her back in my face. Then she gently placed her hand on top of mine. You gotta let me go. I let go. I regret letting go. She slid into the water and swam toward the arm, and as she got close, the rest of the arm's owner came up from below the waves and Amber let out a horrified scream. She tried to get away, tried to swim as fast as she could, but you can't outswim a mermaid. The sea is their home. It caught up with her, gliding through the water like a shark. It wrapped its slender arm around her and dragged her below the sea. I was terrified, but I leapt into the water after her. I swam around the pier for hours, diving below the water, trying to find her, but she was gone. It wasn't until the morning light started to creep over the ocean that I dragged myself back onto the shore and started to shake. It felt like something had wrapped itself around my neck and I tried to claw it away. I couldn't breathe. I couldn't see the crashing waves before me or the rising sun beyond my misting eyes. Amber was gone. I wish it ended there. But after that morning, I went home a mess. My mom tried to understand my explanation, but the existence of the mermaid was too unbelievable. I had to tell her that Amber had cramped while swimming and drowned. She called the cops for me, and later that day they arrived and listened to the same half-truths. Three days they searched the coast. On the fourth, as they were about to begin their search again, they found her head placed on the pier that we'd been on that night. I like to imagine she died that way. It's better than the alternative. I'd rather remember her standing there naked beneath the moon instead of looking like that deformity of a human body with skin stretched over a fish head, razor sharp teeth glimmer under the moonlight. If you want to become a mermaid, don't. I promise you that they aren't like the ones you hear in stories. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then please subscribe. Let's chat in the comments about what we thought of this story because I love this story. There's something about mermaids that it's just terrifying. Like, I think we all love mermaids, but if they were real. Yeah.